Hello and welcome to the news update on African Air Television, reaching you from our studio here in the nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Deborah Eze. We begin from Nigeria. The All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party on Thursday stepped up moves to choose running mates for their presidential candidates. The PDP sets up a committee comprising its governors, the National Working Committee and the Board of Trustees members, as well as former governors with a mandate of picking its vice presidential candidate. It was gathered that the River State's Governor Yesun Wike and his Delta State's counterpart Ifan Yokowa had a testified lobby of the PDP stakeholder as part of moves to clinch the post. On his part, the APC presidential candidate Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu on Thursday began the search for his running mates to meet in with Northern Governors. As Tinubu met Northern Governors, the Independent National Electoral Commission on Thursday gave parties June 17th deadline to submit the names of their presidential candidates and running mates. The commission had on May 27th extended the deadline for the parties to conduct primaries from June 4th to June 9th. And it also fixed June 17th as the deadline for parties to submit lists of their candidates. As to the Nigeria, the federal government has unveiled activities lined up for the celebration of the Yes Democracy Day June 12th, as it declared Monday, June 13th, a public holiday. The President's Mohammed Buhari administration had in 2018 declared the 12th of June every year as Democracy Day in honor of the late presumed winner of the annulled June 12, 1993 election, Moshuda Biola. Briefing journalists yesterday in Abuja, Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed noted that in compliance with the presidential directive, activities lined up for the celebration include a public lecture at the National Marks today, Friday, June 3, 2022 and Juma's prayers on the same day at the same venue. This will be followed by a presidential broadcast on Sunday, June 12th by 7 a.m. and a church service at the National Christian Center at 3 p.m. Monday 13th. June 13th will feature a ceremonial parade which begins 9 a.m. at the Eagle Square. The minister showed that there will be a maximum security during the ceremony while attendance will be strictly on invitation with full compliance with the COVID-19 protocols. And moving on, Algerian President Abdel Majid Tabon hosted his Venezuela counterpart Nico Maduro in Algeria's Thursday. The South American leader arrived in the North African nation on Wednesday evening for what Algeria's state news agency called a two-day working and friendship visit. Both countries agreed to reinforce their economic cooperation and Tabon announced a joint press statement that direct flights between Algeria and Caracas would soon be launched. Algeria and Venezuela are members of the OPEC oil cartel and their government expressed their wish to work more closely on fields like oil and gas. And to do so, Maduro announced that the Algeria-Venezuela joint high-level commission will be reactivated to draw up a new map of cooperation for both countries' prosperity. To move forward in that direction, Nicolas Maduro said Algeria-Venezuela joint high-level commission will be reactivated to draw up a new map of cooperation for both countries' prosperity. And still on the African scene in Senegal, the Yawi Askanwi coalition is keeping pressure on the APR party of President Macky Sall and his coalition. Thousands of supporters of the opposition leader Osman Sonko demonstrated Wednesday in Dakar. They denounced what they called maneuvers by the president of politically eliminate his opponent. The protest came after the Constitutional Council rejected the national list of Yawi as can we, led by Sonko's party. This means he is barred from participating in July 34th election. The opposition figure adamantly reaffirmed his determination. The ruling of the IS court confirmed the decision of the Senegalese interior minister who deemed the national list of both the ruling party and the opposition party inadmissible. In order to beat ruling party coalition, which currently dominates the National Assembly, the Yawi Askanwi coalition and the Walu Senegal coalition of former president Abdullahi Wade teamed up for next month's parliamentary election. We go on a short break now, and when we come back, it's updates from the following scene. Stay with me.
And now welcome back. On the foreign scene today, India reported 7,240 new coronavirus infections in the last 24 hours, the health ministry said on Thursday. Its highest number of daily cases since March 2nd. India financial capital Mumbai, which has seen a rapid rise in cases, reported 1,765 new infections late on Wednesday, an increase of more than 500 cases from its Tuesday caseload. The country reported eight deaths from COVID-19, taking the official death toll to 524,723 today. And moving on, 44% of French people polled accept President Emmanuel Macron's centrist bloc to win this month's parliamentary election. According to an EFOB fiducia poll for South Radio Abet, amid a high abstention rate. Now, the poll, which surveyed 913 people from June 7th to 8th, added 54% said they would abstain. 25% expected the left wing NUPS bloc to win the parliamentary election while 22% expect the far-right Reassembly National Party to win. The election takes place on June 12th and 19th. Macron needs a majority in the lower house of parliament to implement reforms aimed at strengthening the economy, such as proposed changes to pensions and quoting taxes. Still on the foreign scene, China's commercial hub of Shanghai faces an unexpected round of mass COVID-19 testing for most residents this weekend just 10 days after a city-wide lockdown was lifted, uncertainly residents and raising concern about the impact on businesses. Raising to stop a wider outbreak after discovering a few cases in the community, authorities have ordered PCR testing for all residents in 14 of Shanghai's 16 districts over the weekend. Some districts said residents would not be allowed to leave their homes while the testing was carried out. A notice issued, changing district described the stay-home requirements as close management of the community being sampled. The reaction of people on China's Twitter like Weibo platform were a mixture of surprise and concern, with some asking how their plans for the weekend, such as moving house or seeing a doctor, would be affected. Many expressed fear they could be locked down again. And now on to the sports scene, the PFA team of the year results have been unveiled for the Premier League Champions League, League One, League Two and the Women's Super League. The shortlist for selection were compiled by members of the Players' Trade Union in January and then voted for by other players in the respective league. In total, six Liverpool players earned starting berths in the prestigious award including Alison Becker, Trent Alexander Arnold, Virgil van Vick, Thiago, Sergio Mane and Mohamed Salah. Meanwhile, Jao Cancelo, Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne represented champions Manchester City with only two other clubs featuring in the six. Antonio Rudiger earned a starting berth after his stellar campaign at Chelsea culminated with a Germany international choosing to join Real Madrid on a free transfer when his contract expires at the end of June. Finally, Cristiano Ronaldo enjoyed a turbulent campaign following his return to Manchester United but remained talimastic as the mood and results scored at Old Trafford, registering 18 goals from just 27 starts to end his place in the six. Tottenham's Eung Min Son, whose 23 goals in the Premier League saw him share the golden boot with Salah, did not make the best six. And finally, on the sports scene, Nigeria yesterday rallied from a one-goal deficit to beat Syria alone 2-1 in their opening Group A match of Côte d'Ivoire 2023 Africa Cups of Nation qualifier. The match played on the bumpy MK Wabiola Stadium Abuja saw the Syria Leoneers dictating the pace in the early minutes. Nigeria's attacking trio of Victor Osimen, Moses Simon and Samuel Chukweze were all over the pitch looking for assistance from Milfrida that could not withstand fast-paced Leon stars who found the Abuja field easier to thread on. Earlier, Nigeria was particularly uncoordinated in defence, and it was no surprise when Sierra Leoneans capitalised on the Eagles' loose marking to register the first goal through John Mosse's 11th-minute strike. Meanwhile, former Flying Eagle coach John Obu has described the state of the MK Wabiola Stadium as a big national disgrace. Obu wondered why the Nigerian Football Federation would allow the Afghan qualifier to hold in Abuja in spite of the pitch poor condition, said that the poor field affected the Eagles' performance in the encounter. 
And to wrap on news update today, do ensure to follow all our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter, respectively. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel and link us up on www.afikunia.tv. Once again, I am Deborah Eze. Have a beautiful weekend.